That's what's up. That's what's up. Because you had mentioned something earlier about um, St. Louis not being recognized as a like a hip hop hub. Because I was blessed because my sister, I'm from Cleveland. We from Cleveland, but she went to school like in the East St. Louis area. So we would go down there back and forth. So I went down there like right around the time before y'all started going to New York. And I was surprised because I got to meet a lot of rappers down there on East East Saint, uh, Missouri and Illinois side. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, you know, like Nelly and Chingy because they multi-platinum, diamond, you know, but their music wasn't necessarily like like battle rap type music. So it, it kind of took me by surprise. And then people was like telling me about uh, the different St. Louis rappers going to New York. I was already hip to them. And I'm like, oh, no, they some bees. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I got hip to that, uh, like just form of rap, uh, from the Smack DVDs back when it was actual on actual disc, and you know they they would go around and they had battles on them, and it was something about like you know just knowing that you needed to be ready for that kind of confrontation, and then like I didn't necessarily want to be a battle rapper, like I I think you know especially in our day we always looked at it as a platform in the artistry and, uh, you know, getting on becoming actual signed, you know, label acts. And we, uh, but we wanted to have that uh, tool in our shit as sharp, sharp as possible. And so having platforms where we were able to, you know, just practice that, um, that, that, that specialty and then like whenever you start to follow like rules, like disciplines, you know, new or whenever you start to follow, like, or, you know, you start to compete and you compete by rules, new disciplines open up and then new avenues, characters and uh, just possibilities. Worlds are able to be imagined because you're now like a, a you're, you're a platform, just like how you you're, you're able to galvanize different you know, people from artists, you know, come and talk about their art on your, you know, platform. Uh, battle rap was able to, you know, it allows you to basically use whatever you had to fight with. You just got to know it very well and then be able to sell it pretty much. And um, I was, you know, pretty competitive about having the best oratory. I guess that's the word for it. Like just the best oratory availability um, and performance and I figured like if I had like just heavy enough uh, just verbal skills that I could like win in a battle like I didn't actually come up in sports you know I uh, kind of grew up more so in the uh, like lesser you know uh, fort lesser fortunate in on like you know just having like extra stuff to do but when it came to like, you know, battle rap, I was like, no, nah, nobody's going to have like better words and better word presentation than me. And so I studied the places where they did have the best, you know, just way of uh, getting on a beat and getting, you know, just getting across, getting across a message. And uh, I got good at it fast and I had that standard and um, it set me aside and I was able to get in with the guys that, you know, A-Verb, Holla and Eel. Like I always say that I'm not one that was not supposed to be there. Like they all, they knew each other for years, and then I slid in because like Aver would set up these battles, and I felt like he set them up in a way for me, you know, to make them look good. But you're not gonna look good off me. I'm definitely gonna get mine off. So uh, it was like it wasn't, you know, anything. Ill, like it's just iron sharpens iron, and um, I had to be in that position to become like who I am. And I always having that experience allowed me to always revert to it and it's it's a unique experience and I I'm richer for it. Oh yeah, no doubt you definitely on that that Mount Rushmore a uh, uh, St. Louis battle rap. I mean, you you carried it and helped take it to that next level, you know, along with your peers. Um and and like you say your style, I think and and I think the viewers and the fans would agree out of everybody you are the most lyrical. If we, if we read every bar and every line and we listen to everything that you said, it's not even really close. But like some of the guys, they may have performers or they may have, you know, um, you know, different things that they do to, you know, win the battles. But definitely you are a true, true, like a technical, you know, uh, lyricist, I think so. 
Yeah, I'm 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 like uh, like that in life, kind of sort of like I'm um like detail, like, like you know what it is is like the details and like the the uh like I'm I'm, I'm really contextualized, kind of not not even is just well read. It's just like the context in which I'm speaking is very very like detailed. So it's like. And like a lot of people, man, it, it's a whole like math and science to it. And you know, I, I'm glad that people kind of understand it now. But it's still like, like what I'm able to do, you know, with just writing because the word is a very powerful tool. Like the word is the probably the, it's the most powerful tool that we have actually. Like it, it shapes your thoughts and things like that. And so when you have a certain mastery of it. You have like you know you you have a mastery of thoughts and like there there's these like processes that like I don't want, I don't want to get you know just too too nerdy I try to like stay relatable because like I do a lot of studying bro just like honestly like you know just real like you know I really know what um a lot of the stuff I'm talking about sometimes just you know it's creative but a lot of times it's really um there's a dedication to like actual truth in the word. And um, you know, more you're like dedicated to that, you're the better you'll get at anything. So, 